Good day, First World Travellers, and welcome back. Are you planning a trip to Japan? Or are you struggling with that age-old question of whether or not you should get a Japan Rail Pass? If the answer is yes, this video could be for you. Okay, so a few months ago I did a video explaining why I chose not to get a Japan Rail Pass for my first trip in Japan. This was largely due to things like the duration of my trip and also the route that I did through Japan at that time. However, saying that a Japan Rail Pass could be the thing for you. In that video, I briefly touched on a website that you can go to that I'm calling the Easy JR Pass Calculator. Now, you might be wondering why am I doing a video about a website? The reason is, before I came to Japan the first time, I did it all manually. I did it on paper or I did it on my phone. I didn't know this website existed, so the chances are if you're a first timer in Japan, you may not know it exists either. So hopefully you'll find this useful. So onto the website. So the website is japan-guide.com forward slash railpass. Alternatively, you can just go on Google and Google Japan Rail Pass Calculator and it will come up. Now, the first thing you'll see on this website is this page. This is where you can simply enter your itinerary into the drop down boxes. Now, as I always say, it's very important to plan your journey before you even arrive in Japan. This will help decide whether you need a JR pass. Now, I'm gonna give you two examples. The first one is the route that I did the first time I was in Japan, when I went from Nagasaki all the way up to Tokyo over the space of about five weeks. So, as you can see here, I'm putting in my first journey, which was from Nagasaki to Kumamoto. In the middle there, you have the cost of that individual train journey. Now, I'd just like to point out that the costs on this website may not be 100% up to date or accurate. So I would advise downloading Hyperdia, which is an app that you can download to your phone, which gives you much more accurate costs of train journeys. So let's fast forward a bit. Here is my full itinerary for my first trip in Japan. Now, as you can see, the total cost there is 44,000 to 46,500 yen. And underneath that, you have the three types of JR Pass, seven day, 14 day, and 21 day, with the individual costs of those passes. And to the right of that, you can see whether that journey will pay off if you've got a JR Pass. As you can see, if I was to do that journey over seven days, absolutely it would pay off. However, you have to ask yourself, in reality, are you going to cover that amount of distance and go to all those places in seven days? Probably not. If I was to do that journey over a 21 day pass, it would not pay off. It would be much cheaper for me not to get a JR pass. In reality, I did this trip over five weeks, so even a 21 day pass would not have been enough for me. Now let's move on to another itinerary. So one thing I've learned in Japan is that many people do come to Japan as tourists, believe it or not. So they might be in Japan for one week or two weeks, and they will generally do a typical route that involves Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, etc. And this route I've got here shows that. So as you can see, I'm going from Tokyo to Kyoto to Osaka. Maybe I'm doing a day trip to Nara and returning to Osaka. Then I'm doing a day trip to Hiroshima and going straight back to Tokyo. That is a common route that I've found that many people do in Japan. And as you can see, this comes to 43,000 to 44,000 yen. For a seven day pass, this completely pays off massively and potentially you might do that route in seven days. The one thing you've also got to factor in is your travel from the airport. So Narita or Haneda, potentially you'll get a JR train from the airport into Tokyo. You can use your JR pass on this train. And then underneath that, as you can see, it doesn't pay off to get a JR pass if you're doing that route over 14 days or 21 days. So that is the easy JR pass calculator. Very simple. I'm going to put it in the description below as a link so you can access it after this video. Happy days. And finally, before I die of heat exhaustion, it is so hot in Japan right now, I just want to address a couple of points that came up from my previous Japan Rail video. Number one, you don't need to activate your JR Pass as soon as you arrive in Tokyo. This has come up many times in the comments. So if you're in Tokyo for a week, for example, before you go to somewhere like Kyoto or Osaka, you only need to activate your JR Pass when you actually leave Tokyo, say the day before you're going to get your first JR train. If you were to activate it as soon as you got to Tokyo, you would be missing out on all that time of potential train travel. The second point is about the Yamanote line. This is a JR line that runs through Tokyo. Many people will tell you that you have to use your JR pass on the Yamanote line. You don't. So when I was in Tokyo, I got the Yamanote line a couple of times. It's when I did Mario Kart in Shinagawa. Check that video out up above. 
but I didn't need a JR pass to do it. I simply used my PASMO card. That's the thing about Tokyo Travel. You can get a PASMO card or an IC card and use that on the subway. And the third point, many people in my last video commented about the various different types of passes you can get for train travel throughout Japan. You don't need to get a Japan Rail Pass. If you're traveling in a particular area of Japan, you may find that in that area of Japan, they have a particular pass for that area in Japan, if you know what I mean. So you don't need to get a full Japan Rail Pass. For example, it might be a Japan Rail East Pass if you're just traveling in that part of the country. And to my final point, I acknowledge that in my last video, I did not mention anything about other alternatives to the Japan Rail Pass. However, I'm now doing that. So on my current trip in Japan, I'm not getting the train, I'm getting the bus. I've got a video coming up very soon about Japan bus travel, which is a much cheaper alternative to trains. So in conclusion, that website is absolutely brilliant. It can save you so much time when you're planning and I really hope that you found this useful when you're planning your Japan ship. I know I would have found it useful if I'd known about this website before I came to Japan for the first time. Stay tuned for more videos. There's lots more coming from Japan. You can check out my playlist as well. That is in the description below and also will be coming up at the end of this video. So make sure you have a look for some great places to go in Japan. I love Japan, it's brilliant. I'll catch you later.